is up guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video so in today's video we got my dad's 2011 Harley Davidson Street Glide all ripped apart boom so I'll get right to it so if you guys have been on the channel for a little while now you'll know that he had the uh, Metra double din inner fairing with the Sony AX7000 uh, double din radio um, because obviously if you're familiar with like the the 98 to uh, 2013 street glides um, That was before Harley had the boom GTS radios And then that was obviously then before the 2019 era where you could have Apple CarPlay on your motorcycle So even though it's an older bike they had the retrofit uh, like I said inner fairing out from Metra and you could get the Sony AX7000 radio, which had water-resistant buttons. Hence, only water-resistant buttons. They didn't have um, any waterproofing technology in the radio itself. So, fast forward about two and a half years or so later, um, that Sony, we would be replacing it now for what would be the third time. We already went through two, but we have another solution because finally Soundstream radios, uh, as some of you guys may know, they came out with uh, newer model radios for the 2014 and plus street glide and road glides, which are obviously kind of mimicking the Harley Davidson factory radio that come in all the bikes after 2019. Um, kind of just giving you some a little bit more aftermarket flexibility for radios and amps and such. And it's coming in at a lot lower price point than a Harley Boom GTS radio, which I believe is like $2,500 if your radio would crap out and you're out of warranty versus the Soundstream, which is coming in right around $1,000. And it pretty much looks identical for the most part. But that is neither here nor there because Soundstream finally came out with a solution for all of you older model like 98 to 2013 street glide and road glide guys that have the old radio like such in so they finally have a double din option for you guys that reuses your stock inner fairing um, so that way you guys can get a newer radio bluetooth technology uh, usb technology where it's a lot easier to charge your phone rather than a cigarette plug lighter as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So, as I showed you earlier, we already have his bike mostly ripped apart. So if you came here to find out how to take the outer fairing off, I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to pay attention when we put it back on, because like I said, we had to go from the double din Metra inner fairing back to the stock fairing. So, now that we got to that point, we can go unbox this radio and uh, walk you through the steps on the install and then we can test it out and see what it's like. So before I get too tangent on a rant, let's go check this thing out. So boom, there it is. Soundstream Reserve. So like I said, this is going to work for 98 to 2013 Street Glides. The Road Glide one for 98 to 13 is slightly different. It's more ovaled on the radio itself. But as always, I will have a link down below in the description for this one for the Street Glides. As you can see, 98 13 SG. And I'll throw the 98 to 13 Road Glide link down there. But right off the bat, you can see Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You have Sirius XM ready. Obviously, you have to buy that tuner separate. And this is IP5, which is uh, liquid protection. And it's obviously a plug and play install for your 98 to 2013 Harley Street Glide or Road Glide. And this is gonna be a seven inch screen. So let's get this thing unboxed. So if I didn't mention before, um, like I did say, the, uh, the newer Street Glides and Road Glides um, this is right around $1,000, which is as well as these older model street glides and road glides. So first thing out of the box, you got your actual wire harness. Um, it's pretty much just going to be like 
a Y harness to kind of just go in line with everything. You got some hardware, which I would be assuming is to remount into the bike and or for an amp if you have one. And we got this product from Note Cycles. How nice of them to include some nerds. These guys had very extremely fast shipping. They are out of Frederick, Maryland. Um, and obviously, you know, we are in Eastern PA. So we ordered this on Friday. It is now Tuesday and it is already delivered. So that is pretty amazing right there. So on the back of the radio here, you can see pretty much the antenna and the USB dongle comes straight from the radio itself already. Everything's already sealed up. <clears throat> this USB adapter is pretty cool because it has a waterproof or watertight cover on it. And this is going to go right where your factory cigarette plug lighter is. So they already have that designed to fit in perfect, which is amazing. And then obviously you have some RCAs and some other adapters, which this is going to be for your turn signals and neutral and oil light. You can kind of see this is a single DIN to a double DIN. So because this is going to block your neutral and turn signal and oil light indicator, they have that integration now into the radio since this will be blocking it. Um, it's not really a big deal because you'll just unplug the stock uh, wire and just plug that in. Considering how this has to slide in from the front now because of the big screen, they have some weatherproofing rubber around the radio, which is gonna help seal it to the inner fairing to make sure we keep that water out. Unlike the Sony AX7000 that we already went through two of them, this comes with a two year warranty. So obviously if you have any issues, you should be able to get it swapped out. Obviously, we didn't go through that process and hope to never have to go through that process. But that is a little reassurance knowing that it comes with a two year warranty. So first things first is we're gonna be removing the two Allen screws that are on both sides of the radio using a 3 16th Allen wrench. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain to get in there and get them, but we have the utmost faith in you guys. And we already went ahead and removed these adapters. You just peel up, pull off. And then this one, if you guys have a street glide, will not be used because that is for the CB intercom, I believe. And then you obviously just pull the antenna out. All right, once both sets of Allen screws are removed and the radio is unplugged, you just wiggle back towards you. And obviously you're gonna have some wires and the bracket tree that snugs it up a little bit. Just like that, the radio is out. And then we can get ready to proceed with inserting the new radio in from the front side. All right guys, real quick before we proceed with the install. We are checking out the hardware. This is an uh, old hex that came out of the stock radio and this is one of the four supplied new ones. As you can see, the new bolt is slightly shorter. So because of that and not wanting any fitment issues, we're just gonna use the supplied hardware that came with the radio. So like I said, we're gonna be installing the new radio from the front side back. So since there's two of us, we're just gonna work together real quick. Make sure we don't get snagged up on anything. And from what they say, you want to forcefully push this in so that way you can make sure that you get through that weather stripping rubber there. It is noted on one of their videos that if you have an Ultra, the Ultra comes with a slightly thicker inner fairing. So you'll have to push it in uh, with a little bit more force than say a street glide, but it went in pretty easy. So we might have to push it back just a smidge more for the time being, until we get the screw started, um, we're gonna leave it there for now. One other thing that I forgot to mention is, and we already had did it because we had to take the inner fairing off, you're gonna have to pull your ignition. 
The easiest way to do such is to turn it all the way to the right and then there is a tab on the bottom of the ignition and just pull it straight out. I have the ignition here. That is the tab that I'm talking about. So with the ignition in, you're gonna turn it all the way to the right, pinch the tab and pull straight up and out. And just be careful because there is a spring on the ignition, make sure that stays in. And then same thing when you go to put the ignition back in, reverse the process. So getting in here, I know you guys can't see crap because I can't even really see crap. But we are just using a screwdriver to help pry the radio just to line up the holes. It is pretty tight working in here. So if you have a second pair of hands, just use them. It'll make your life a lot easier. So I don't know how well you guys can see, but he was just putting a screwdriver in there and prying it like so against that bracket just to line up the screw holes. And not only that, but it helps pull the radio back just ever so slightly. Um, so the seal grabs the front of the fairing a little better to make it more watertight. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I got one started on that side. This one I just started. I don't have them tight all the way. I wanted to leave them semi-loose just to make sure everything lines up. So because there's nothing to really see here, I'm just gonna throw the other screws in, tighten all four Allen bolts up real quick and then we'll come back to plugging the radio in. All right, so back to the radio. Those front side Allen uh, bolts were an absolute bear at hand. So as far as hooking the radio up, we're gonna go up top to our indicator, like I said, the turn signal and oil light and such. Disconnect that. Uh, since that plug is open, we'll probably go ahead and electrical tape that up just so moisture doesn't get in it in case we ever decide to take the radio out or have to, that it doesn't get messed up. Find the light plug here on the sound stream and just go ahead and plug that right in until it clicks. I don't know if you guys can see, but right there we already have our cigarette plug lighter out. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna untangle this dongle quick. And then we'll have to unscrew the cap or the nut, then the cap, pull that off. All right, so the harness is real simple. We got some inline fuses here. Obviously this is gonna be for your CB. Um, this is for the bike. And then this is for the radio. So we'll go hook up the bike here first. Plug that in. And then just pull that over till it clicks. That's in. And like I said, that's for a CB, so that's not gonna be used. And this is your amp remote wire if you have an amp, which what's nice about this sound stream is on top we have four mounting holes that are already pre-threaded. So that's gonna work with any amp um, bracket that is 2014 plus. So that's pretty neat. And then last but not least, find our radio antenna and just plug that in. And then we'll just have to take some time here and move some things out of the way to make room for our fairing. But other than that, we are pretty much done as far as putting the radio in. So now we can proceed to putting our ignition in. All right, so as far as your ignition goes, we'll have that little locking or kind of just spacer thing, whatever it is. Pops down like so. And you screw the nut down. And you just grab a pair of pliers and just make sure it is tight. Not too tight because it's just plastic. And then now we can drop our ignition in the same way it came out. All right, so then you'll hear a little click and then go ahead. 
All right, and the ignition is reinstalled. Obviously nothing's turning on because we still have the main fuse pulled. Now the USB is installed. All right, so we got everything plugged in. We got the harness plugged in, the antenna plugged in, the USB all set up. Um, so real quick, before we put the outer fairing and reattach the headlight and uh, such, we're just gonna throw the main fuse back in and make sure the radio is working. So let's go throw that fuse in and let's go check this thing out. All right, so he's gonna go ahead, throw the main fuse back in. Turn the ignition on. We can pull the virgin paper off. As you can see, our oil indicator is lit up and the high beam. And when he puts it in neutral, the neutral light. Turn signal is light, lit. Right turn signal is lit. So we're just gonna go ahead, select English. America, check. Uh, speakers are working and then we have a home button so you see we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the radio, USB, Bluetooth phone, Sirius XM. Uh, it is worth noting that this does come with a uh, aftermarket little mic um, if you would want to use the Bluetooth phone uh, for talking purposes but obviously that's not going to work very well um, because if you try to do it when you're riding all you're going to pick up is wind. You have a digital equalizer. Have to play around with that a little later when we can crank some tunes. Um, that is for a camera. If you have a front or rear facing camera, I don't know why you'd really need that on a bike. Uh, that just drops the bars down. We got the settings, system settings, date, time. Let's go ahead and change that. And it is July 18th. And it is 6.43 p.m. Go back out. And then that is pretty much that. Bluetooth will connect later. Display settings. Uh, background wallpaper. Kind of change it. I don't know. Uh, looks like you can plug in a USB device and really get to change your background if you want. Set that for now. And then touch key color, uh, we'll probably go with either white or red, if they have that option. Yellow is what the page is at. So orange, what would you like it at, orange okay, or red? Yeah. I think it'll match the gauges. Yep, try to match gauges, so we'll leave auto change in color off. And then go back home. And then this is, uh, that's nighttime mode, daytime mode. As you can see, the moon and the sun. So let's go grab a cord and plug it in and make sure the CarPlay functions. So the phone is charging. And boom. There's Apple CarPlay on your 1998 to 2013 Harley Street Glide. Alright, so at this point, we can work on getting the outer fairing back in. He's going to go ahead and plug the headlight in and then he has some lights up by the windshield to try to make sure everything tucks in nice. And then we'll have four total screws, not including the windshield. The windshield we should have seven. I'm just going to go ahead and start the middle screw for the windshield just to help hold the fairing in place for the time being. And then. From there, kind of work your windshield in, and then he's just going to work on the other screws, kind of just leave everything a little loose until we get the actual fairing screws started. Alright, so once you get your three windshield screws started, you're going to have a fairing screw here, and then forks turned that hole. I don't know if I can get my finger in there with the flashlight or not. But right there, you're going to have a screw. And then those two holes are going to be the exact same on the clutch side. 
So once again, screw hole there. And then the forks are currently turned, so you will not be able to see it, but it would be in that same region as the throttle side. So those are the only four bolts remaining to hold your outer fairing on. So we're just gonna go ahead and tighten those up and then we'll just do a once over of the radio. All right guys, so we got the fairing all put back on, all tightened up and such. So let's go check out this radio now in final form. So there's the unit itself. As you can see, you get clear vision of all of your gauges and you can still turn your ignition all the way. I mean, it touches just ever so slightly, but you'll be fine. So ignition on. So right there from the home screen. Also, according to the camera, these are flickering. I reassure you they are not. It's just the LED being so low voltage. But as you can see, turn signal is flashing. Bright turn signal. And then the high beam. But like I was saying, because of those plug in separately, uh, if anything happens to the radio, you should still have full functionality of your turn signal, oil and neutral and high beam light. But that is the uh, radio. Once again, just another look at it. And as you can see, it kind of fits in just perfectly. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but like there's that seal and it just fits perfectly in there right at the gauges still access all your switches down there if need be but that's it that's the uh, sound stream radio peek at it from this side But that is the Soundstream radio for your 98 to 2013 Harley Davidson Street Glide. Like I said, this is for if you still have your stock inner fairing. Um, if you did do the Metra double din fairing with the old Sony AX7000, you are going to have to uh, find another inner fairing because it needs to be stock for the, the single din uh, portion. But that's the only thing really worth noting here. Installation was relatively easy other than those two back screws, which if you've ever been in there before, you know it's a pain in the butt. But this is awesome because it is waterproof uh, rated and it comes with a two year warranty, like I said. So as always, I'll have the links to them down below in the description. And like I said, I'll throw one for the 98 to 13 Road Glide as well, because Soundstream does have a option uh, for those bikes as well, but if you guys made it this far in the video make sure to smash that like button Comment subscribe hit that bell icon so that way you guys stay notified when I post new videos like this one Make sure to ride safe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one Peace